So I know lots of young people who are ski bums for a year or two or, you know, work and hang out and travel and party. And, you know, there are lots of young people that do that. Very few of them go on to create their own company, living the life of their dreams. So now I'm interested in the transition from, yeah, you know, fun ski bum, going on cool trips, totally cool, to at some point you actually earning revenue so you can keep doing this forever and ever without having to go back to the job thing. How do okay, you get so that kind of lift off? So a lot of people kind of misunderstand that they think that I'm a digital nomad. I guess a lot of people might consider me a digital nomad. I personally do not consider myself a digital nomad. I consider myself an expat. Now, the next question is, well, what is the difference between an expat or even what is an expat and what is a digital nomad? Digital nomad is often somebody who travels, works online, and makes money as they travel. Now, they might do it slowly. They might travel and spend two months or three months in one country or maybe even six months in one country, but they're always going to move on. An expat is someone who leaves a country and goes to another country and gets a residency and who lives there and incorporates themselves into the society. That's kind of what I've done. Now, a secondary question is, well, how is that not different than an immigrant? Well, usually an immigrant is someone who moves to another country and they're going to spend the rest of their life there. They're going to be there forever. An expat might do it for a year or five years or 20 years, but they always know that they're going to either return to their country of birth or go to another country. So in my example, I had an opportunity to live in New Zealand. I was in New Zealand for one year. I had a residency to live there. I had a legal right to work in that country. Same with Australia. I lived in Australia for three years. I had the legal right to work there. I had Australian friends. I had a house there. I had a job. I mean, I, I worked there and then I traveled out from that place. I've always done what I affectionately call the hub and spoke model. So I become an expat in one place and I use that as my base to travel out. So let's take Australia for an example. In the three years, I traveled all over Australia. I went to the Red Center. I went up the coast. I went to Tasmania but I also went to the South Pacific. So I went to Tonga and I went to Vanuatu and I went to Fiji, actually went to Fiji, I think like five times. I would go for a long weekend. I'd go scuba diving for a week and then I'd come back. You know, I went to Southeast Asia. I went to Hawaii. I traveled all of these amazing places. So what this allows me to do is to take shorter, quicker flights to places for shorter amounts of time. From Melbourne, where I lived to go to Fiji was like a six hour, seven hour flight. Now, if I was going to do that from Toronto, I mean, it would take me two days to get there. It would just be completely unreasonable. And it'd certainly be unreasonable to do it for two days or three days. Even a week or two would probably be, you'd be so jet lagged. And that's what I've done over and over again. I lived in Singapore from all through Southeast Asia when I used Singapore as a base. I lived in Abu Dhabi. I lived there for eight years. I went to Oman and Bahrain and um, I went all through um, Europe because it was a four, five, six hour flight to Europe. I went to Turkey multiple times. I went to Kuwait. I went, I don't know, so many places. I went down to Africa. I was in Uganda and Kenya and Nigeria and South Africa, Botswana and Zimbabwe. All these were four hour, five hour, seven hour flights. Fine when you live in Abu Dhabi, terrible if you live in Toronto or in New York or in Los Angeles or anything like this. So I did have jobs through a lot of the periods of my travel as an expat. Now, to kind of go back to your question of when did I start building the business, I got into entrepreneurship probably about 10 or 11 years ago. And I wouldn't say that the very first thing I did, I hit a home run by any means. I had a lot of failing businesses and I learned things along the way. And now I started my current business about five years ago which is the expat money brand, the expat money podcast and the book and the magazine and all these types of things that I've done. And that's really where I work with as a consultant, where I work and do services to help people with their tax issues. And I'll work with the lawyers and the accountants and, and tie everything together. But this kind of goes also back to my point, you know, at 12 years old, did I know what was going on? No. When I was a beach bum, did I have everything figured out? No. When I was living in Australia in 2006? No, I didn't have it all figured out. But piece by piece, it kind of, like connect the dots. Do you remember this game, connect the mm -hmm. dots? Looking backwards, it all makes sense.
going forwards, none of it makes sense. And I guess maybe that's an important point for your kid. You're not going to know where it's going to take them. And I mean, the kid's certainly not going to know, but, but these lines will, they, they will line up, I guess is mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say.